Don't take it personal. It's just business. Why don't you leave your emotions out the door? You gotta learn how to separate work and life. Who do all of these remind you of? I don't mean to call anybody out, but if there is one thing I want to argue, it's that businesses are like us. They are like people too. Now, as a social media strategist, I work with many small and medium businesses across different industries. And let me tell you, these corporate decisions they make, they are based on human feelings as well. Therefore, it doesn't really make sense to separate the entity of a business and human connection. Now, in both cases, we tend to compare ourselves in the field as we grow. The focus shifts from qualitative aspects to a more quantitative approach. Now, the consequences to this in a human sense is that leaders start losing sight of what is important. I usually start asking my clients in my initial meetings, what does success mean to you? And this is what I noticed. Their responses range from a high amount of vanity metrics like likes and engagements to an aggressive amount of sales, more revenue, and an increase in the number of clientele. Fair enough, the easiest way for everybody to measure success is through quantifiable measures. Now notice how this is very similar to how many of us measure our success at an individual level. The amount of money that we make the value of our material possessions, and the amount of square feet we want to have in our future home. Now, I encourage leaders to bring yourselves back to that first day you launched your business and generated that idea. And remember these ethics you built your company around. In the beginning, you started with a small team whom you work with really closely. You spent countless hours together working with these same people working tirelessly as they help you achieve your dream. This creates closeness between everyone feeling more like a family despite the differences in hierarchy and positions. However, things change as they get bigger. As the workload increases, you start hiring more people. Then this causes also an increase in pressure to meet results and consumer demands. Now, although your business is expanding, leaders start to lose sight of all of these connections they have around them. Personally, I have been a part of many meetings when the sole focus of the discussion was my output, how much revenue I brought, and how fast I worked. And over the past few years, I realized that whenever I met and exceeded these expectations, they were quickly met with a monetary reward and a comment. It felt like my self-worth was tied to my output, making me feel so uninspired to do my work, share my feelings, and just be my authentic self in the workplace. But why is this? It is because we all have emotional blind spots, social and emotional differences that make us unaware of how other people feel. And it is because of these emotional blind spots that make us all unaware of what is important. Now, at the end of the day, money will still be money. However, your team, your colleagues, and your employees, they are all the most valuable assets of your company and are the real contributors to your business's success. And if you start prioritizing all of them, the numbers will surely follow. Now, the importance of having a safe and open workspace is often overlooked, especially by large organizations distracted by numbers and results. And yes, all of these components are pivotal to your company's success. However, there must be a balance between all of them. We are all aware of the concept of empathy. It is imagining yourself in someone else's skin, feeling what they feel, and seeing yourself and the world from their point of view. And I believe that many businesses often do not practice empathy. However, we need to start thinking and talking about it. Why is it when someone doesn't perform well at work, we are so quick to judge and react? But when we are in a relationship with a loved one who might mess up, we don't just break the relationship right away. We take a step back, pause, and ask them what is wrong. 
Now, I understand not all higher-ups have the time to deal with everybody's personal problems. But the issue that I'm trying to address here is to have the option of creating these open conversations, especially if you notice that someone's life outside of work is affecting their performance at work. Because these open conversations can be opportunities to create one-on-one -on -one meetings, workshops, and personal discussions to figure all of these roots out. Now, workplace relationships are to be work-appropriate and professional. However, these mental check-ins are not only important for your team, but for your whole company as well. Because at the end of the day, where would leaders be without their team? Now, this is important because someday, many of us will open our own businesses, while many others will hold leadership positions in multiple organizations. And as leaders of the future, we must accept the responsibility to watch out for those who we lead. We must all contribute to a safe and open workspace where everyone feels heard and understood. And by practicing empathy and leadership, we all need to understand that everyone's feelings matter just as much as our own. Thank you.